This video is brought to you by Brilliant.Work and be sure you guys go check out the website. Use the link Brilliant.Work slash BlackpinkRepin. So that's how you guys can support my channel. Thank you guys so much for doing that. You guys can go there and sign up for a free account so you guys can start to do math for fun over there. They have a lot of interesting and challenging questions over there with detailed explanations. As we know, sometimes we have to really really pay attention to the technical details otherwise we will be making technical mistakes. Therefore, today, I have these two limit questions for you guys. As we know, right here we have the limit as n goes to infinity, n to a third power over n plus 1 and n to a third power. But for the second one, it looks similar to the first, but instead of the third power, we have the nth power here, right? Do you think that we are going to end up with the same answer or not? As always, pause the video and try them first. Okay, which one did you guys do first? And it should be this right here, and the answer to this is equal to 1, right? However, for the second one, the answer to this is not equal to 1, right? And that's why I said, this right here, it has some small technical part we have to pay close attention to, all right? And that's what I'm going to do for you guys right here. Anyway, let's talk about the first. If you want to just say, let's go ahead and ignore the plus 1 on the bottom right here in these parentheses, and say, this is the same as n to the third power over n to the third power like this, and n down was equal to 1, that's okay. And you have the correct answer, that's equal to 1. But we cannot do the same thing right here. We cannot just say this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity, n to the nth power, and then ignore the plus 1, and say this is n to the n as well on the bottom, and say this is equal to 1. This right here is not correct. All right? And you may be wondering why. Well, first of all, the power here is n, and the deal is that n is approaching infinity. So you have infinite product right here, right? In comparison to the first one, we only have a finite product because the power is only a 3. So, for example, on the top, it just means n times n times n. But this right here is n times n times n times n, infinitely many n's, right? Okay, so how are we going to do this? But actually, let me just show you guys the first step for both two, all right? So for this right here, both of them are raised to a third power, so I can write this expression as n over n plus 1 and then to the third power, all right? And I can do the same right here. That's okay, because that's just algebra, right? Now, here is the technical part. If you want to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the inner part, namely n over n plus 1, this and that are the same. And yes, if you do that, you can just ignore the power for now. Here, we'll end up with 1, right, for the inside. The limit-wise, this is going to be 1 for the inside. And the power here is 3. Right? So that's the limit form that we'll get, 1 to the third power. And in fact, right here, we can draw a conclusion. So we can say this is approaching 1, and that's okay. However, if you look at this part, the inner limit will go to 1, right? Because you just consider n over n, that's okay. But the moment you plug in infinity for the exponent here, we will have the form of the limit, 1 to the infinity. And this right here, we don't know what this is going to be. And here is the part that caused a lot of trouble to a lot of students, because you may be wondering, isn't 1 to any power always equal to 1, right? Yes, if you're just doing computation. But no, this is the limit form, 1 to the infinity's power. So what we're trying to say is, this 1 is not exactly equal to 1, all right? This 1 right here, you can just think about it as, in this case, if you just look at it inside, you know this is always going to be less than 1. You can plug in n is equal to 1,000, you know, just try it out, and you will know this is going to be less than 1, right? So I will say this 1 is actually means something like that, 0 0.99999, a lot of 9's like this. And then you take this as the base raised to the infinity's power, right? And sometimes when we have 1 to the infinity's power in a limit situation, the 1 is not a solid 1, it may represent a number like 1.000001. It's just a small number that's really close to 1. That's the limit form, right? And what we're saying is that if you have this right here, this is just computation. If you say that f of x equals to 1 as the solid 1, right? This is the base 1 
to an x power right here. I know this is extremely redundant, but I just want to make it clear. This is just a computation, all right? And if you want to say f of, let's say, 2017, because this is <laughs> 2017, it's almost over, but it's good, right? Anyway, plugging 2017 into here, we have 1 to the 2017 power, and this is equal to 1. I agree. And if you want to take the limit as x goes to infinity of the function, 1 to the x power, all right? Now, we are talking about the actual 1, all right? When you plug in infinity, this right here is an actual 1. This is just like exactly 1. I don't know how we try to describe it. This is the actual 1, exact 1, right? The only 1 that we have, right? This is the kind of things they can say to your girlfriend. But anyway, we are plugging infinity into this exponent. So we will have 1 to the infinity's power. And in this case, the 1 is a solid 1 because that's where we start off with, right? So we will actually end up with 1, and this is correct. However, if you look back to this, once again, even though I just put down 1, but that's what we do when we're trying to compute limit, this 1, it really means to be a number like 0 0.9999999, right? And as you know, the denominator is bigger than the numerator. That's why I put down the base as a number that's just a little bit smaller than 1. And when you take this number raised to the infinity's power, we don't know what's going to happen. We have to do more work. But we just write it down as 1 to the infinity's power as the form of the indeterminate form, right? So now, let's see what we can do with that. But let's finish this first. We know the answer to this is just 1 to a third power, so we can conclude this is equal to 1. And we are done, all right? This is the more interesting part. Well, how can we handle this, though? Keep in mind, when we're talking about sequence, series, and things like that, I have told you guys my best friend, the list, and here is, of course, the fact. I just want to give this a name so that whenever I'm using it, I can just quote it. And if you want to see how we derive this, check the videos, and the links to the videos are in the description. In order for me to use the fact, I must have this one right here, and then plus a over n. I have to make sure that I have that form right here as well. I have two terms on the bottom though, that's not what we want. I kind of want to flip the fraction. Can I do that? Yes, when I flip the fraction inside of the base, I just have to negate the exponent, and that's okay. So now let me write this down for you. n plus 1 now over n raised to the negative n's power, right? And this and that are the same. And of course, we can just split the fraction. n over n is 1, and this is plus 1 over n, and then we have this raised to the negative n's power. This is now the same form of that. All we have to do is to identify the a and b values. Then we can quote this formula and then work that out. So in this case, you see we have the plus, and we have the a, which is equal to 1. There's no other number, so a has to be 1, right? So I will just write down a is equal to 1. In the meantime, b is equal to negative 1. So that's the values. And then we know it's going to be e to the a times b's power, so it's 1 times negative 1, namely e to the negative 1 power, and that's be fancy, this is 1 over e, right? So the limit right here to this question is 1 over e, which is about 0 0.36 something. So this, this is definitely not equal to 1, and this is the crazy part. Keep in mind, this is a really common mistake because we are missing out the technical details, right? In the end, I want to make the connection between what we just did and the math details. So here is the deal. Whenever we're taking a limit of a n times b n, and in fact, this right here can be any finite amount, but let me just put down two of them, okay? So this is equal to the limit of a n times the limit of b n under the assumption that both limits exist, okay? In another word, the limit of a product is the same as the product of the limits, all right, for any finite amount. And that's exactly what we used for the first one. Take a look right here. When we had n over n plus 1 to the third power, this means we had n over n plus 1 times n over n plus 1 times n over n plus 1. Only three of them, of course, it's finite. So we can write this as this times this times that, and then compute the limit individually, and then at the end multiply the values, right? So you see, the first one is equal to 1, the second one is also equal to 1, and the third one is also equal to 1. 
1 times 1 times 1. At the end, we can say this is equal to 1, of course. However, once we have infinite amount of product inside like this, this is not necessarily true, right? We have to be super careful with infinity most of the time. You see, the limit as an times bn times cn and dot dot dot, this right here is not the same as the infinite product of bunch of limits. And that's exactly what we saw for the second limit, because when we had n over n plus 1 to the nth power, we had n going to infinity. So this right here means we have infinite many n over n plus 1, n over n plus 1, n over n plus 1, dot 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 dot. We have infinite amount of these things. If you want to write this down as this times this times this dot dot dot, they are not necessarily the same because we saw that this right here, in fact, it went to 1 over e for the limit, right? We cannot just say this right here is 1 times 1 times 1 times dot dot dot. We cannot say 1 to the infinity is approaching to 1 in the limit situation, right? So here are the details that you have to pay attention to. And in fact, recently I made a small mistake, a technical mistake, which I still end up with the same answer, but um, no, I was not supposed to do that. I enlist the video, but if you guys want to check that out, you can see the link in the description and you can point it out what the mistake is from that video, right? But anyway, we really have to pay attention to these kind of details because if we don't, we will be making this kind of technical mistakes, isn't it? But sometimes textbooks, they don't have these kind of things, but it's okay because you guys can continue to watch my videos. I will continue to provide math lessons for you guys. And also, please go check out Brilliant.org. Especially, they do have a lot of excellent explanations like this on their site. And if you're interested to sign up for their courses, use the link Brilliant.org slash BlackPenRedPen. And if you're one of the first 200 people to subscribe, they will give you a 20% off discount for the annual premium subscription. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. And comment down below and let me know if you guys have any questions. And at the moment, that's it.